Hello gamers, we have another guide here today for Hunter Ed. Now he's one of the last hunters that I'm leveling out here. We still have Amanda to go, but uh, my favorite role in the game, definitely Hunter. Ed is uh, a really fun character to play. He specializes in ranged weapons, as well as debunking traps and finding rare items. But before we get into all that, I ask you please subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of Evil Dead, the game content, as well as survivor guides, gameplay videos, and opinion videos. So if you're enjoying Evil Dead the game, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Let's get to the guide. So you'll notice right away, if you've seen any of my other hunter guides, Ed is built really similar to the other hunters. The only thing that really separates him is the flat stats, which he has a five out of five in range. If you look at the character selection screen, it shows their stats. Uh, he has a five out of five in range and his abilities are pretty unique for the character. I think as a team character ed is a very very helpful hunter he deals a lot of damage and he has utility outside of just damage so evil dead 2 ash has the anti-fear ability so he has some team utility as well the other two hunters really focus on damage output so if you're doing something with a four person team that you have created with your friends ed and evil dash 2 would probably be my two picks of the two best hunters but for solo queue if you're playing by on your own definitely the other two hunters could fit in or work well. So let's go over his abilities. The first one is his active ability of it's a trap. So when this is activated, the ability grants a unique flashlight that allows you to detect and temporarily disarm demon traps. So how this ability works is it's not deactivating every single trap that is on the map. It's only ones that you shine your light on and they may not even be activated. It just reveals where traps would be. Now, if they, those traps were set up, it, the flashlight would deactivate them. It also works on chests and trees placed along the map. The next one is Enduring Light. This increases the battery life of your flashlight. Now some might think this is a throwaway perk, and it kind of is, but it is kind of useful if you're looting a lot and you're running a lot on your own because the flashlight can be helpful in those scenarios. His next specialization is Crossbow Weapon Master. Um, it's a little underwhelming. Uh, the crossbow I thought was going to be a really good weapon when I first started, but the, but the aim for the crossbow seems really, really inconsistent. Sometimes I can really hit headshots with them. Other times I feel like I can't hit anything with the crossbow. So I actually prefer using the shotgun, the blunderbuss, the revolver, anything like that with Ed. I have way more damage output and way more consistent aiming with those. So uh, I'm not really a big fan of the crossbow, but it's still cool that it that he has the perk. And his level 25 perk, the collector. This increases the chance that defeated enemies will drop items. Also improve the chances of finding crates in higher rarity. So I've tested this a couple times and honestly, I can't see the difference in how often you find rarer chests. I kind of think that they're placed maybe more often along the map, but maybe the path that the game runs us. Sometimes I just don't see anything. Uh, one of the first games that I tried with this, I don't think I found above a rare in that specific game. That was just a, just one time, but still, I just thought that it would be a little more noticeable uh, from for the hype for this ability. Now, the increased chance of defeated enemies will drop items. I believe that only applies to things that have finishers because that's when enemies drop items the most is when you do finishers on them. So keep that in mind when you're trying to get more ammo, shimps, or amulets from defeated enemies. Now let's get to the point breakdown. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's very hunter, so I'm not going to take it too long on some of the general choices. I did do a little bit of variety this time, though. So I went long shot one here just to get us started in the tree. Of course, we're going to do the flat 25% bonus in our ranged weapons. I did an extra point and balance bar damage and then one in firm grass, and then a full four in the headshot. So you really, if you're a hunter, you're really going to practice on those headshots. You really need to be optimizing your damage, and this is one way to do it. So normally I go for the flat fear, but I'm kind of moving away towards it because I do want to try just branching out more. I mean, in those three points in a non- connecting tree with all these hunters uh I, I just you just really need to be careful when you're a hunter and managing that fear because you will wipe your team if you get possessed and your team can't stop you so just be careful if you're not taking the flat fear reduction 
Uh, below, I have all three max and stamina. I think the hunter's strengths a lot lay into the massive amount of stamina and the heavy amounts of dodge. So with these, the three and the maximum stamina and the three and reduce the stamina cast of dodge, cost of dodging, I think really benefit the hunter. And I think all the hunters should be using them until it kind of either gets nerfed or if it just becomes a main part of the uh, kit. Next is Deadly Up Close. Again, I'm using blunderbusses and shotguns a lot with Ed and revolvers. So being up close is not really a hard thing to do. So taking that extra 25% damage is really easy. And then we have the last chance. Uh, that's with the last bullet in the gun gets a 30% bonus. Uh, I like this one with the shotguns, with the blunderbuss. Even if you're trying out the crossbow, I mean, it gets that 30% every time. So you really don't even need to hit headshots uh, when you're using the crossbow if you have all four points in here because it deals a lot of damage on its own. But as far as leveling the character in the game with the pink Fs, I definitely prioritize fear, stamina, and ranged first. Uh, if you have a Pablo on your team, you might want to go a point or two into shield. That way you're getting the benefits of his amulets. But that's the general rule of thumb I would do if you're curious about a pink F leveling guide. I would focus on fear and stamina first, and then when you start getting into more fights, uh, go into your range. Because early on in the game, you should just be looting. You should just be finding map pieces. So you really shouldn't be using your weapons all that much because you don't want to alert the demon so it's kind of okay to slowly progress your range and even if you have to wait until the, the dagger and the page objectives to finish out your range tree with your pink f i say that's reasonable so i hope you enjoyed this mini guide for ed i'm having a lot of fun with ed i just maxed him out so i might not get to play him as much as i like to but we're moving on to the next survivor it's looking like we have henry uh, henry the red and pablo as our next guides so if you're looking forward to those characters please subscribe to the channel like the video leave a comment on how you like to build ed and i'll see you in the next one thanks